Space represents very challenging extreme environments due to radiation, extreme temperatures, microgravity, and communication latencies. And also spacecraft design itself has been constrained by mass, volume, energy, and the computational power. So there are a lot of challenges in terms of developing technologies using artificial intelligence and robotics for space missions. Starlab stands for Space Technology for Autonomous and Robotic Systems Lab. We are a team of academic scholars, roboticists, and computer scientists who share the same vision to develop AI robotics for space. Interesting collaboration we have is with a company called uh, Shadow Robotics, which is one of the leading small companies uh, in the world that produce technology uh, in robotic hands. We have been following um, Star Lab and Professor Yang's research for a long time. So our conversation has led to discussing about the grasping requirements in space research. Currently, Nikos, who's in Yang's uh, research group, is developing a demonstrator which uses um, shadow hand light, which is one of our robotic hands. So we have technology integration between our manipulators and the shadow hand to demonstrate how we can successfully and intelligently to autonomously grasp uh, uh, unknown target in space. Well, we're investigating how a robot could be autonomously grasp a satellite or a part of a space debris uh, from visual input. And uh, we're using for this purpose, we're using um, uh, artificial intelligence and we're also using uh, robotic uh, grippers, hands and, uh, and uh, arms. The collaboration with Shadow Robotics will really enable us to enhance the capability of the grasping in our autonomous manipulation demonstration um, because the hand itself offers much higher degree of freedom that allows us to manipulate an interface with object that has arbitrary shape and this really enlarges the capability of the end-to-end -end system that we are trying to demonstrate for in-orbit autonomous grasping. Our technologies in planetary robotics has been primarily focusing on development of next generation of mobility system that allows future space missions to effectively explore another planetary body. The role of planetary robotics is to aid the biologists and the geologists in their mission to better understand the Earth from looking outwards into the solar system. Um, from a perspective of astrobiology and geology primarily. For example, we have developed uh, new rover chassis designs using active suspension system that really allows our robots to negotiate with variety of terrains in terms of geological features or topological features. So my research is uh, focused on trying to improve the locomotion capabilities of a, of a rover, of a planetary uh, rover for exploration. So in order to make it be able to deal with more challenging terrains, uh, so to, to be able to deal both with loose soil, extremely loose soil, and uh, steep obstacles or uneven terrains, things like that. This is relevant to future missions such as uh, sample return missions to Mars or the Martian moon uh, Phobos. GMV is a space company that we collaborate in planetary robotics. They specialize in developing navigation algorithms, which is very complementary to our expertise. So together we can really develop future generation of autonomous planetary rovers. So currently we have uh, an active proposal we're working with Starlab on, which is going to look at uh, a system level study for lunar cave exploration using um, next generation autonomy, um, chassis techniques for small 
robotic systems to enter underground terrains in challenging environments on the lunar surface. The also technology we developed to enable not just uh, horizontal mobility or surface mobility but also subsurface mobility such as the, the drill system that we developed inspired by the wood wasp. So this is the second generation of the dual reciprocating drill or DRD. Uh, the main purpose of this uh, generation was to take the uh, actuation mechanism which up until this point had been attached to a very large test rig and to condense it into a small uh, mechanism that could be fitted within the drill heads creating a completely closed system that would enable the drill to potentially be attached to a planetary rover. This is the third generation that we are working on. It is uh, combining both uh, main motions, the reciprocation motion and also the vibration motion together. So the next step is for us to try to develop an actual system prototype, which is where the third generation of the DRD um, will be developed. So now we want to create an actual system that will be, will be small, will be lightweight and will be relatively simple and that we can actually this time attach to one of our planetary rovers and to actually test it in the field. Changing the design of the drill bit is a key factor to improve the performance of the drilling. So we are working on the design of the drill bit itself and also developing the design of uh, DRD or the dual reciprocation uh, drill. The drill uh, that we developed can really perform very efficiently in terms of energy consumption. It also can be designed very lightweight and very compact. This would open up new type of um, you know, mission possibilities for the sector. Starlab is very active in knowledge and technology transfer into other sectors that also deal with extreme environment, such as nuclear, oil and gas and agriculture. Well, robotics are really important in hazardous environments because uh, if you use robots to do tasks in hazardous environments, it means people don't need to go into those areas and put themselves in danger. Some of the tasks that they can do are things like inspection and um, monitoring of facilities, but also handling and um, interaction, physical interactions with ob objects. So Starlab's doing lots of um, really interesting work in mobile inspection, uh, where mobile robots can g drive around facilities and inspect uh, the condition of plant and the condition of equipment in those facilities. So the work I'm doing is making use of a technique called generative adversarial networks, which are a type of deep learning technique. And the idea is to um, create a model of what is visually normal in an environment and then compare uh, that model to what is actually detected in the environment. And by detecting the model of what's normal, um, by comparing the model of what's normal with actually what's measured in the environment, you can detect things which are not normal, things which are anomalous, and they're of interest in industrial inspection tasks. This uh, work is part of uh, industrial safety sensor project. In this project, as part in this project, we would like to develop an inspector robot. This robot should do the routine inspection, uh, which currently uh, done by human. So we need the robot to do this routine inspection, this repetitive task, and sometimes maybe can be uh, dangerous. So the robot usually will go around the plant or, or chemical plant, take a measurement, detect if there's any gas leakage or abnormal situation, and of course we should report this to the uh, operator. Personally, it's very exciting and motivating for me to be the head of Star Lab and working with a group of uh, dedicated, hard-working researchers. Collaboration is key to the, the work we do. Um, we need to always remain in contact with the fundamental research done by a group like Star Lab. Everyone here is um, a robotics expert. Everyone's very, um, very keen on the um, on the field of planetary exploration, whether it be um, through rovers or, or through satellite systems. It's full of brilliant people who have expertise in robotics, machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's also um, working across space, nuclear, oil and gas and other 
application domains. So it's really great to look at the um, cross application techniques and things which can transfer between different application domains. So together we can uh, push the boundary of the state of the art in artificial intelligence and robotics and helping address uh, challenges in industrial sectors where we really want robotics to help to improve safety operation and um, minimize human intervention so that they don't need to be in uh, the dangerous environment.